So, you've got the collision detection sorted and now you need to play a sound file when the object disappears. Well, this is a nice simple piece of code that doesn't require a double digits length video just to explain it. Find your way to the collision detection code that we were just working on. To do this, you'll need to double click on the object that's not disappearing in the collision, scroll your way down to the if statement that dealt with the collision and pop your code in there. What we want to do is for the disappearing object to make a pop noise, and we can do this with this nice bit of Java code. It's part of the Greenfoot library itself, and it's the play sound method. All we need to pass to it as an argument is the name of the audio file that we'll be playing. Now, the exam board will tell you what the file's called, but it's worth knowing where to find them, as we need to check the file name. In the folder you were provided with, you'll find one called sounds. Double click on that to see what sounds have been provided for us. Ah, uh, just the one sound and it's called pop.wav. Now, the exam board haven't actually given us any other sound ever. It's always been pop.wav, never anything different. But if I were an examiner, then this is something I'd be changing just to see if people understand the code or have they just wrote learnt it. So do a double check before you work through it, just in case. So the name of the file is pop.wav and we have to provide this as a string so it needs to be in double quotes as usual in Java. Whip that line of code in just after we've removed the object as you don't want the sound before it's vanished and finish it up with a semicolon and we're done. Let's test it out. Run the game and move the pirate right on top of the treasure chest. Well hey, see, I told you this would be unbelievably easy. However, Next lesson isn't quite so easy because our next job is starting to get scores working.